You know, uh, the issue of a Jewish uh, slave trade it runs very, very deep, and it's uh, extremely sensitive. Uh, one extremely sensitive for the for the Israel, for the state of the Israel, and for the Jews. It's very, very difficult issue to deal with uh, when you become a boss uh, appointed uh, at uh, Equal Employment Opportunity Commission. Uh, uh, none of whatsoever so far have uh, their masters, Germans, Dutch, Anglo-Saxons, uh, however found more suitable to represent them, uh, broker basically, do the brokerage uh, in the world of American affairs, uh, in the world of uh, British affairs, let's say, and it's uh, not any different today in the Germany than Jews. Jews are just due to Holocaust at the most uh, appropriate due to also uh, historic uh, persecution against them, historic uh, basically injustice against these people are just simply it became like a like a major landmark, like a, like in a human uh, against human, you know, in a human injustice field. Yes, and they are they are highly by the by American State Department, by uh, United States of America Department of Justice. They are just they just settled right at the top of this pyramid of uh, peoples that uh, uh, they are the most suitable, basically, to broker. Uh, the deals uh, in this multi-racial, uh, polarized even world, you know. Um, look, um, the Polish-Lithuanian uh, Commonwealth uh, became known about uh, maybe about the Kmenitsky uprising when it comes to the Jewish uh, slavery trade. Um, and if you are to look for any kind of uh, Jewish uh, slave trade business, Gesellschaft, uh, like they say in Yiddish, I think, uh, you will not, you will, you will just simply, you will not, you're not going to find anything. Yes, you, you, if you, if you go for, if you, if you'll be looking for uh, a Jewish slave trade, let's see, Jewish Transatlantic uh, slave trade. You, the closest you're gonna come to this issue, the closest you're gonna come to this issue. Well, let's see this here. Oh, you go. There is a video they offer you right there. It's explanation that there were like 20 Jews that were the slave. They also, I, I think that they, what what the guy says is like a 20 people they owned uh, as a slaves or something like this. I mean, let's, uh, he's a perfect example. Really, really the most... You've heard the anti-Semitic tropes. Jews run the banks, Jews manipulate space lasers, Jews pull the strings and make world leaders dance. But have you heard that Jews controlled the slave trade? This libelous claim began circulating in 1991 when an extremist organization known as the Nation of Islam claimed to have gathered irrefutable evidence that Jews ran the slave trade in the Americas. Most recently, the claim reared its ugly head when NBA star Kyrie Irving promoted the film he... Yeah, ugly, this ugly people. Uh, all this ugly people, uh, baseless claims. Uh, let me see this one here, so cute. Uh, he makes the allegation about... Uh, Southerners, uh, let's see this here. 12,000 Southerners enslaved more than 50 people. Want to guess how many of that number were Jews? 20. So the Okay. 50 Southerners that owned more than 50 slaves. What? More than 50 people. Let's see this stuff again. In roughly 12,000 Southerners enslaved more than... More than roughly 12,000 enslaved uh, 50 people. And uh, 50 yeah. people want to guess yeah. how many of that number were Jews? Yeah. If you want to guess, you know, the thing is, I don't want to guess, 
I don't want to guess. You know what I mean? I am not interested in guessing. I don't like to guess. Guess what? I don't like to guess. Uh, okay. The guy is a perfect example. You know, this guy is like a perfect, perfect. I love the way he's got this David Starr right there in his plate. And I see he is not what we classify in America as white. Uh, he is not black. And he is not, uh, I don't know, Latino. And he's not, uh, he's just a little bit of everything. Uh, he's not Asian. He's just a little bit of everything, you know. And it's like a perfect, perfect, perfect. He was, by the way, he was involved in MK Ultra. They involved him, you know. Crimey River, they involved him in MK Ultra. And the video is actually, whatever he modernized in one, he contemplated in this video already 10 years ago. But here is the deal. Uh, he did a good job for me here. You've heard the anti-Semitic tropes. Jews run the banks, Jews manipulate space lanes. Those are anti-Semitic anti conspiracy, uh, secret uh, Jewish space laser. Like, uh, you know, let me ask you something, yeah? What would you Jews do today without a new conspiracy theory such as a secret Jewish space laser? I mean, you know, if you want to blend yourself into the world where you're going to portray us, the people, the real people, like a fake lie, like something that doesn't exist, then you need, actually, a space laser theorist, too, don't you? And then you have all these handy people like Donald Trump, Marjorie Taylor, that they go with their reporters and they act stupid in front of the cameras, basically, you know, awkward, stupid, stupidish. So um, that the real people like myself look more like, uh, no, nah, you know, it's just as a conspiracy theory never happened, you know. If you want to learn about a Jewish slave trade, don't think you're going to learn anything about from the Internet, you know. Don't think that you will learn anything from this stuff, because when you will go like this to the internet and you will browse this stuff, it's, you're gonna, it's, the only thing that's going to be, everything is going to be covered like this. You know, when I say transatlantic trade, I mean British, I mean Deutsche, German, I mean Belgium, Dutch, Dutch was a big one, Dutch was the slave trade. USA Americano, um, no, nah, yeah, but yeah, America was uh, based, uh, basically established on Anglo-Saxon slave trade. Uh, on these people whom I have mentioned love to hide their faces behind Jews very often. Now, the Jews were their main business, historically looking, the main uh, Gesellschaft. The, the, the num, Nummer 1 Gesellschaft from the Israel, from the, from the Jews, historically, always was number one. And it can be also heard from their last names and so on. It was the jewelry. It was uh, borrowing the money for a really, really hefty interest rates. Uh, it was... Uh, Diamond, gold, uh, trade, uh, it was uh, transatlantic uh, slave trade in a very, very big way uh, that you no longer can get a trace about. It was, it was a business that was booming. The slave trade contributed a lot to the Jewish community. Uh, and then there was that other business also. Uh, it's it's known as a uh, warmongering business. That's basically when when uh, when uh, you know next to the espionage that you provide for uh, the biggest countries, strongest countries throughout the Europe, like Germany, Britain, um, uh, 
you also engage in a business after you know the countries burn one another you know meaning that you spread the net of your people throughout the continent which uh, doesn't like uh, the two religious reasons um, you know the military service and that kind of stuff in those days before the israel came to existence but at least since the world war ii yeah in the world war ii jews already started to enlist themselves in a military i heard in american military yes but you know before that really uh, on in universal torah thinking belief it was, it was not kosher to dress yourself in in a military clothing, like in a, in a French or Spanish or uh, Italian or German or Polish or whatever uh, Russian uh, military clothing was not. No, 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 no. It was not kosher. This was reserved for the Gentiles. You know, no, 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 no. Uh, you know, Jews don't do killing. You know, don't like wars. Don't don't do killing. It's not kosher. It's not. You know, if you, if you go and you see this in Israel, you know, at least on the videos, they still maintain that. They still maintain that there's a fraction of the Jews, the religious, they call them a religious Jews, that is like, no, 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 no. No military, demilitarized, peaceful people, uh, people, people that are pacifists, no, it's against my religion, will not go even to the IDF, will not go serve Israeli defense uh, forces or anything like this. 999 so they they left that kind of stuff the gentiles uh to you know to to trade blows against one another uh at the same time however they were very very useful to their to their hosts um supplying them with information you know with the uh, with the good information that flew basically from Russia all the way to to Deutschland or from France or Spain, whatever, to to Germany, about you know, uh, and Britain and whatever, and vice versa too. Because, you know, it's a business, you know, uh, so that you know they could they could always move in these prominent circles and they 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 always get their. Uh, you know, business going basically. They they were somehow tolerated, no matter what. All through in Europe, there was a lot of countries they would not allow them to stay, and they would move them and so on and back and forth. Still, they managed to thrive despite absolutely everything. They, uh, if there was some persecution against Jews, which would randomly take place, they would. We do bad stuff to the Jews on the European continent, from Portugal, from Spain, uh, through to Italy and France and Germany, not really, but uh, everywhere. Oh, okay, also in Germany and in Poland and in Britain and Russia, wherever it would be, they would find themselves not... Uh, not welcome because of you know this kind of strange circumstance and maybe this one of the the best one of their business practices which did not only involve the cash operation with the cash flow uh, buying gold and trading with the gold and uh, diamonds and so on also was a business with uh, what uh, would left would be left uh, uh, out of the countries, out of their host countries, after they burn each other. So you have a war between the France and and Germany, whatever, Poland and Germany. You know, even if uh, it would be tough for the Jews and uh, they would endure maybe uh, persecution or whatever it might be, uh, after the war, everything was quiet and nice and peaceful. And you could get, if you had the money, you know, this is the biggest problem was that people did not even have for the food after the war. You know, when the, when it's the war is a struggle, they burn even houses and people and everything. Uh, the food is the biggest commodity, really, after the war, even after the war, after, after the war, the money would come from other countries that were not burnt. From their relatives, from the Jewish community, the money would travel, chuk, 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 chuk. And before you know, you're buying now for pennies and dollars 
äh, houses, äh, real estate, G Gesellschaft, booming. Uh, simply, if you wanted to, and I certainly am not for it, you could never ever make them disappear in absolutely any way. Because they range anywhere from Russia all over, all the way to the Germany. No, forget about Spain and France, Italy. Forget about these issues. The thing is, they were based in the most powerful countries, such as Britain, uh, Germany. Germany was like a big, second to the Israel, no longer existing Israel. Till the Israel, uh, till the World War II, was, Germany was their number one country in Europe. And so, you know, all these wars that Germany implemented always uh, all the way to Spain, all the way to France, Portugal, uh, into the Russia, through the Poland and Ukraine, uh, you could you could uh, you could trace people with the names Goldstein, Silverstein, Diamondstein, uh, you know, I fuck you up, Stein, you know, I rip you off, Stein, you know, give me a house for Penny Stein, uh, you know, I'll give you the information if you pay me, Stein, and so on, and so forth, and so on, and so forth, for centuries, for bloody, really, really bloody, bloody centuries. This is just uh, basically... Uh, the nature, basically, of these people. This was the, the business. They did not have any kind of Casio factories, and they did not have any kind of uh, business electronic uh, and uh, manufacturing facilities, uh, you know, where they would, I don't know. Uh, manufacturing, yes, actually, the business where they would make money through investments and stuff like this, yes, but not as a workers inside. No, no, they they were they were they were mainly they were accountants, uh, well situated and physicians and lawyers, always traditionally, and always connected to the top government. And if the top government would not listen, before you know, they would be connected to the one that is interested. They were making the laws based on their own, completely their own. Uh, rules completely disregarding in the state and people and you know fucking ran you over like you have like you never fucking existed in your lifetime uh, Khmelnytsky Bogdan Khmelnytsky was a Ukrainian uh, to whom they have compared me during MK Ultra. they rated him as a schizophrenic they rated him as a schizophrenic and they rated him as a father of the Adolf Hitler during MKUltra, uh, and Jews demanded Jews from Israel, from the Knesset, from the Knesset, Israel's Knesset, yes, they demanded from the Ukrainians a complete compliance, like ultimatum, like the war is coming on your ass, the war is knocking on your door, and you will fucking do whatever we say, and if you're not going to fucking do, you're not going to exist, basically. And their uh, masters, uh, Anglo-Saxons, uh, Germans, uh, the only thing they did is they moved, they moved their hands up and down. They were all, it was alles, yeah, yeah, you will, yeah, yeah, you will. So you have a Jack LeBerg's uh, that give you a lessons on, on, on how to view your life, how to view your mama and your papa, basically. Uh, they, you enter the, this is, this is called internet, yeah, this is called internet search urge, engine, uh, and uh, they're going to school you, you don't have to go, you don't have to have any kind of education, you know, you know that song, we don't need no education, uh, you go, you, 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 you make yourself comfortable, and you go to uh, Uncle Google, and it's so easy, you just enter the words inside, and then you have doctors, basically, they give you the complete background, they give you like a complete solutions to your questions, they already provide answers even for the questions that you don't ask. You don't have to worry about absolutely nothing. Eh? Um, enter anything you want, and that's it. Uh, let's say, so faith, faith, yeah, we're going to put here a Jewish. 
slave trade in Ukraine. And you're going to get your rum. There you go. And it goes slave trade in the early modern Crimea. Well, that's this actually bad one. Uh, Netanyahu told me this is the worst one. This one here is the worst one. He said, maybe, maybe this one, maybe. Uh, but he said to me, this one here, no way. He said this, oh, sorry, not this one, uh, about the Khmelnytsky. No. Yeah, they, they talk about the black slave trade, the black sea slave trade. You see the black sea, sea slave trade? Do, do you know why they talk about the, the black sea slave trade? I will get to this stuff. Because somewhat they were capable to connect themselves to the Crimean Tatars, uh, who also I understand. Nobody knows any. I don't know anything about this stuff that Crimean Tatars would do the slave trade and the Arabs that would do the slave trade. Uh, and so Arabs apparently and Turks uh, did uh, a slave trade uh, in uh, Crimea uh, next to the Jews. Mm, I am extremely, extremely skeptic about this stuff uh, because of the following, I will tell you. So you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't get nothing here. Look, you don't get nothing. You just get Black Sea, Black Sea, Black Sea. Uh, and well, you don't get nothing. You just get this here for this here for the Black Sea. Uh, Jewish Black Sea trade, uh, I was told this was the biggest, ladies and gentlemen, this was the biggest threat, the biggest danger to the Jews, stuff I'm talking about, in respect to the slave trade, because their masters, Anglo-Saxon, German, Dutch, Deutsch and Dutch, and I don't know, uh, they made sure the Jacksbergs would not have anything to worry about uh, when it comes to transatlantic trade. So now the only thing you have to do is we have to take another proof down because there's only one more is left. This also, I think, is why the war in Ukraine. The Jews certainly knew how to use the war in Ukraine. Uh, the biggest proof, the biggest problem that's still left on the Internet and uh, still remaining proof about uh, is uh, Ukraine. So what the fuck are we going to do with this Ukraine? Huh? What we have to do something about we did uh, we did with uh, with uh, uh, with uh, with uh, Germans, Britons, Dutch, and probably French and Belgians and uh, United States America. We all already fixed it. Now we have to take care of this fucking problem because this does not look good for us. Yeah. So now if you want to, uh, if you want a military assistance from the West, from the NATO, uh, you will have to agree to our terms and conditions. And our terms and conditions specify that what you will be talking about, the only one that will be for you, legible for you to talk about, is this one here since it's a problem it's a really problem because the problem is big the problem is that the purest slave trade jew slave owners slave traders uh, it didn't take on the crimea crimea is like a, like a sea base basically it's like a sea peninsula and uh, as such is uh, like a naturally Oh, also, when they are close to Russia and so on, all those cultures, uh, not exactly like the purest thing that would take place against the Ukrainian people. You know what I mean? So now what we do is, plus that, there was, I'm sure, also Arabs and Tatars and Turks that would do business with the slave trade. What we will do is we will only allow you to talk about this stuff here. This is how the Jew operates. This is how they operated in MK Ultra. So you will be talking about this stuff here. Now, there is a bigger fucking problem that we have to take care. Uh, me talking to you right now as a Knesset, you know, like Mr. Knesset. So call me Mr. Knesset right now. So 
And that fucking problem I am going to fix in a such a way that I will prohibit Ukrainians to tell the truth to the world about uh, Kamalnitsky. And what I will do, I will also go ahead and I will uh, 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 label Kmanitsky as um, coming of the Adolf Hitler uh, before the, the Hitler arrived, uh, like a forefather of the Hitler is what Netanyahu claimed. Knesset, Mr. Knesset called him uh, forefather of the Hitler. His name was Kmelnitsky, he was a Ukrainian. Uh, little did Kmelnitsky know about the Hitler in 1650. And when I look at this here, oh my God, actually, uh, it actually says here that he actually killed even up to 100,000 Jews. It just yesterday I was looking, it was like, from it ranged from, uh, from, from, Ten to thirty thousand, and somewhere I saw it uh, up to thirty-three thousand. I took that number. Uh, you know what? I apologize. I will go ahead, and I I actually prefer the number one hundred thousand here, not because I would want uh, uh, to see hundred thousand Jews that suffered in it, but because of the proof. I'm going to lay to you about. You know, I mean, I'm going to go straight to it. I mean, 100,000 Jews were killed in 1650 by Kmelnitsky, who, just like myself also, Jews have rated as a schizophrenic. I will get to that issue. Uh, and so it, it looks like they killed every Jew in Ukraine. Nothing more left. But during the World War II, uh, Nazis, Hitler exterminated 1.6 million Jews in Ukraine. So I don't know how it went uh, to zero, to nothing, and then all of a sudden, again, the number appears that uh, they exterminated 1.6 million. I mean, if it was so bad, if they exterminated absolutely every Jew, I don't understand how during the World War II, all of a sudden, 1.6 million appeared. I don't know how many Jews in Ukraine during the World War II survived, Escape to Russia, whatever the case might be. I have no idea because really, uh, I'm not aware that they would they would uh, Nazi collaborators, whatever collaborators, uh, killed all kinds of people. Not only Jews, they killed Polacks, they killed uh, Russians, they killed uh, whatever they possibly could kill uh, to. To build themselves a Ukraine. I'm not saying that this is the right thing to do. I'm not advocating it. I don't want to concentrate on that issue. Um, I don't know how this would be the right thing to do, especially because Hitler uh, exterminated Ukrainian people. It makes no fucking sense for Ukrainian people from the Ukrainian point of view to side with the other Hitler. I don't understand how anybody can interpret this to see uh, Ukrainian people as something I will support out of Hitler. Uh, Hitler exterminated uh, southern part of Ukraine, literally exterminated, used Hungarian people, Hungars. Hungarians signed the pact with Adolf Hitler in the axis of the evil, one of the countries that participated with axis of evil was Hungary. And, and uh, uh, Adolf Hitler refused to cooperate in, a, in absolutely any way, cooperate with the Ukrainian people, so that Hungarian people could exterminate Ukrainian people during the World War II for the sake of Bukovina. Bukovina is the southern part of the Ukraine, so they could that Hungarian could expand themselves uh, at uh, expense of the exterminated Ukrainian people. You got to read a little bit the history about that stuff. So you know <laughs> where the fuck you get this. Yeah, you get this because you need for your political agenda to realize one. So then you make your stories basically the way they fit to you. Uh, so this uh, schizophrenic Khmelnytsky, you know, a schizophrenic like myself is what the Knesset claimed. Yeah. He was a schizophrenic like you, you know. He was a schizophrenic 
because he also killed Pollux, you know. Let me let me demonstrate you. This stuff here. He suggested it's written somewhere that he suggested the Jews. Stealing, they steal their wives basically. They, they said that he was evil because all of a sudden he came with a statement uh, that the Jews are stealing the wives of the Ukrainian people. Uh, well, <laughs> I mean, uh, that's fucking evil. I mean, if somebody tells you, you know, whatever you are, that you have a group of people inside that are fucking stealing your daughters. Uh, and your wives and sell them for the cash uh, that's fucking evil man I don't think you would want to have that uh, nationality within your borders if they would be doing this stuff like this but the thing is the Jews were doing this big time this was historically looking one of the, their businesses one of the Gesellschaft, the business this was the business this was the lifeline this was one of the lifelines for the Rubenstein for uh, Diamondstein for the Goldenstein for the Silversteins and uh, this was one of their business the Gesellschaft basically you can't fucking take that away from it and so the reason for that business was this here this was what is known as a Polish Lithuanian Empire it's a big fucking empire the Poland and Lithuania built and they enslaved Ukrainian people they put the rope around the neck to the Ukrainians they put them in a chain, and uh, they used, just like Germans, just like a Dutch, or like a British, or for any empire in Europe, they used Jews for the business, for the slave trade. So this uh, Polish nobility, you know, noble, noble man, you know, I like this Czarniczki and uh, Jebaczki and all these people here that you can read about how they... Uh, you know, the nobilities, you know, the Polish nobilities, you know, this is actually really fucking schizophrenic shit. Not that I would be a schizophrenic, but to go and rate somebody that stood up against this kind of oppression, uh, fucking slavery, uh, running a fucking slave trade business throughout the country, and rating one as a schizophrenic that is so fucked up that can also... It can only be made in Poland. It can only be made in Polska. And Poland always had this historic appetite to enslave Ukrainian people, to put the rope around their neck. Uh, they wanted, basically, Ukraine, but, you know, with Ukraine with a chain around the neck, basically. So uh, once, you know, um, he started, you know, this, uh, this guy, this... Uh, Melnitsky once once he went berserk and he he suggested you know that they 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 are stealing their wives their daughters and sell them and stuff like this. Uh, yeah, this is like probably the earliest anti-Semitism recorded in Ukraine. Yes, yes it's anti-Semitism. Yeah. Uh, so once he went berserk, he just uh, they 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 he dispatched. Uh, this the Ukrainian uh, Cossacks onto the hunt and uh, they started to exterminate Pollocks and Jews from uh, from Ukraine yeah I, I am not going to go and waste my time with this stuff here I just uh, uh, I'm sure he got an impressive resume and all this. I am just really looking for the information where, where it, could, it could be that, that he... Uh... Okay, okay. Um, let's not waste uh, time with this stuff, yeah. Uh, basically... Uh, do we have some something about the victims, the numbers of the victims and that kind of stuff? Massacred and took uh, an, a large number of Jews, uh, Roman Catholics and United Christians. Yeah, man, this guy seems like he was fucking evil. Eh? 
Magnitsky uprising. Come on, tell me about the slave trade, because this is the stuff I'm not supposed to talk to you according to the Knesset. Knesset advised me, Knesset advised me that if I will be talking about this stuff here, I will be listed as a Nazi and so on. I will be listed as a Nazi, as an anti-Semite and so on. And the thing is that uh, they fear this issue more than any other issue, because this is the issue that pertained to the slave, to the Jewish slave trade throughout Ukraine during the time when Ukrainian people were literally obliterated by the Polacks. During the time when the Polacks have made colony out of uh, Ukraine, literally to the certain degree, definitely to accommodate Jewish slave trade. So this is like so fucking ugly. Actually, this is so 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 fucking disgusting on a Jewish resume right there that should take Jews from any kind of uh, being historically persecuted victims, uh, racism and discrimination of the fucking list for good for fucking eternity. And yo, oh my God, it still fucking exists despite disappearance of transatlantic Jewish slave trade, it still exists. It still exists. And with absolutely everything Mr. Knesset tried to do to steer away attention so this would no longer exist in absolutely any way, and that's why it was 100,000 Jews that was exterminated. Yeah, th this is why it was 100,000 Jews. They exterminated 100,000 Jews. This is why. This is why. So don't fucking talk about us, man. Because if you're going to talk about us, uh, if you're going to talk about us, about this stuff here, uh, the only thing that's going to happen is, the only thing that's going to happen is, uh, you're going to be anti-Semite. You're going to be a neo-Nazi. And you know what? Ukraine is not going to get help. It's not going to help from America. It's not going to be no help from Western Europe. There will be no help. There will be no fucking help. And you're going to lose the war, and you're going to lose the Eastern Europe, you're going to, oh, you're fucking gone, you'll disappear. That's it. That's it. This is how they defend themselves, and this is basically how they manipulate reality, literally through the internet, literally deleting and creating their own fiction. That's how it works. The war with the Hamas was attempted by the Jewish state, by the Israel, to be used also through what started as a kidnapping to completely facade their hijacking, abduction, slave trade issues involved in their history. Involving their history. Just go and Google yourself here. Uh, Abducted to Israel, whatever, and you're going to get all about the Hamas, abducted. Don't kill me. Don't kill me with many of these victims, Jewish victims, involved in MK Ultra. I don't know why Hamas would go right after them to kidnap them, but many, with many of them, they attempted to actually delete, wipe out the true about presence in the culture which involved none other than slave trade. So the, the owners, the bosses of the so-called American Equal Employment Opportunity Commission have a deep fucking trace I mean, in the most bloody, in the bloodiest trace of them all, and were literally used by their masters to broker, basically, slave trade. This is basically who runs today in the United States of America Equal Employment Opportunity Commission. I'm not here to take the fucking Nazi side. I don't give a fuck about anti-Semitism. The biggest anti-Semite that I know of, none other, is than a Jew. Because those Palestinian people are rightful real Jews. Uh, Semites. 
They are 100% Semites. They are more pure Semites than the Jews are in Israel. I'm not here to falsify the history. I'm not here to do whatever the fuck. I'm here to straighten up the fucking facts and return my fucking videos back, motherfuckers. I don't like when you take the fucking videos down and you start to forge the history. We start to forge when you take down the police documents, basically when they fucking recorded you, video recorded you. It's just one video that I found. Uh, and it actually, this one was not even so good. This one is actually even from the Israeli TV. Welcome but there back were to the Bible. In this video, I traveled to Egypt. To this clown was involved in MK Ultra, And this is American Luciferian, a real, real, real neo-Nazi. A real German Wehrmacht boy. That, Explore uh, one of the most significant discoveries ever made in biblical archaeology. If fucking yes, how the hell not, eh? He'll take you to the Egypt, and he'll demonstrate you how Egypt is actually Israel. Or old where what? Where across he the Nile not River even... lay the ruins of the mortuary temples. Fuck yes. Where the pharaohs uh, he... of old were once worshipped. Listen, the pharaohs, all of the pharaohs were all Jews. Trust me. My name is Mr. Knesset. Trust me, I tell you, I give it a chew if you want to know gods. something. This one is the mortuary temple of Pharaoh Merneptah, who ruled Egypt from about 1213 to 1204 BC. And this is where, on a winter day in 1896, Flinders Petrie was excavating. You know, the thing about it is that Egyptians won't even have to worry about it. If the ancient Israel existed over there, <laughs> because the Israel is going to rain them over anyways. And it's going to go Sinai Peninsula, as they plan on. You don't even have to worry about one year and make no fucking difference. Petrie wrote, Poor the them, site of Merneptah's temple was matter. disaster. Over till excavating, the Merneptah Steely. If this is American terrorist, literally American terrorist, who used me for his trip to Egypt to bully, to bully, to harass, to intimidate Egyptian government. River lay the ruins. My first stop in Egypt. You see, we are already on the right side of the uh, of the Nile River bank. We're not even on a Mount Sin on a on a on a Sinai Peninsula anymore. He was involved in it. You know, I warmly recommend you this. It's called Evidence for Ancient Israel Discovered in Egypt. There is another e evidence also. Before I go to to the stuff I was going to finish that also popped up on the internet. And all you got to do is just write it down. Ben Gurion Canal. And that's all you got to do. This is another evidence of why we did war with Egypt. Is it the interesting set of the questions? Like, can Israel use a Suez Canal instead? You know, just extend a little bit throughout the uh, throughout the Sinai. Isn't that an interesting question? What about what is proposed canal in Israel? Uh, why is Israel losing water? Listen, why the fuck is Israel? Why is Israel losing water? You tell me right now. Why is the Israel? You tell me right now. Why the Israel is losing water? What is Israel doing to Palestine? Oh, I don't know. They're just do over there some work, basically. So there's going to be like a second canal. It's going to make shipments easier through the canal, basically. Uh, should I add here the magic word Egypt? And we have a recipe for the war. Because Uncle Google gives you all the answers. You need, you need no fucking questions. We give you an answer for the questions you don't even ask. The Bangorian Canal, if constructed, would rival the Suez Canal. 
and cause a major financial threat to the Egypt. My God, my God. So that means basically that the best thing is just to fuck Egypt. You know what I mean? It will cause major financial threat to the Egypt. So if it's if it's if it's gonna cause the major financial threat to the Egypt, then perhaps it's time for demonstrate to the world why the Egypt assaulted Israel, isn't it? Because because you know why? It's just because well because because this is just a major financial threat to the Egypt. This canal, this new canal, it's a major threat to the Egypt. This is why the Egypt attacked Israel. And we will just do this stuff by resettling through the extermination procedure. The remaining Palestinian population from Gaza onto the Egyptian side. That's all. You want proofs about this shit? I'm going to tell you that in 2011, because of what became clearly seen as Israel's preparations for the war against the Egypt, which already charted the map along, along the Gulf, Aqaba. On the other side, you have Saudi Arabia. Egypt decided would not even allow Palestinian people to resettle on Egyptian side because they knew that they would be used to start the war to give the false flag attack the opportunity to the Israel for the war for a Sinai Peninsula. So what happened? The states the states surrounding the Gulf of Aqaba you see this shit here? No, 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 no. It's it, it's in particular. It's in particular. Um, in particular, uh, Egypt doesn't take doesn't allow the refugees in a Sinai Peninsula anywhere in the border area. It came to agreement when it comes to. I'm going to demonstrate you this map here. It came to agreement already in 2011, and I hope you guys will finalize this before it's going to get too late for everybody. It came to agreement that Israel will not be allowed to use a canal if they're going to build a canal, because they will impose protection for the marine life. Uh, a construction of the Israeli of the Israeli uh, canal would actually destroy the nature, the marine life of the entire Gulf of Aqaba was established. That the ships that would travel through would decimate marine life too. They already, including the Saudi Arabia, uh, Egypt, all the countries in area uh, demanded for this to be signed. So that it would not really not go of a Kaaba only, but the Israel would not expand itself all the way to uh, to the Suez Canal through the war. You guys have to see this marine life yourself, uh, investigate these issues, because this is what Israel plans as next. Israel basically opened the front on the south. And it opened the front uh, through the Syria all the way to Dam of Assad. And they planned to, through the courts, expand themselves all the way to Iraq. I have seen their maps. I have seen the stuff they're doing. And at the present, you know, they are up to nothing good, basically exterminating the Palestinian people completely from 
what used to be Gaza. Okay, so they are exterminating Semites uh, for good and for the greater and better and more just world, for the sake of the greater Israel. Malnitsky was rated as a schizophrenic, especially because he went on to kill Polish nobilities, Polish noblemen, uh, and Pollux supported this theory for obvious reasons. Uh, they didn't want to be seen as uh, slaves, even as uh, slave traders, those that, that with the Jews together trade with Ukrainian slaves that enslaved Ukraine. So they could rather support the theory of Stepan Bandera. This guy here. Yeah. This, who became known as the ultimate killer of the Jews and of the Polish people who exterminated, he really did. Uh, you know, you got to fucking ask yourself why there would be a, such a hatred against the Polish people in Ukraine during the World War II. They would go on to do the stuff like this. But for that matter, you have to look the origins of the conflict between the Pollocks and uh, Ukrainian people far back in the history, all the way to 1650. That's about like 300 years before the Hitler appeared anywhere. And then you will understand what means the blood sucking. By the way, Stefan Bandera was not even allowed to go to the university. Well, fucking high school. Because Poland still exercised apartheid till the World War II against Ukrainian people. Just like in South Africa was the apartheid. This is after they lost the ability to control Ukraine through the slavery issues related stuff. They still have ability, at least portion of Ukraine to control through the apartheid. And what they would do, they would treat people without allowing people to attend universities, etc., etc., etc. So... Uh, this Stepan Bandera is a big question, but there is absolutely no doubt about Kmelnitsky that Kmelnitsky la, uh, made fundaments for uh, a claim against Bandera to basically be completely, completely baseless. You have no fucking base to make any kind of discriminatory claims against Stepan Bandera because of Kmelnitsky. Kmelnitsky pointed out what went on in 1650 in Ukraine, who did it, how they did it, what they did it, and even why you are now bound instead to read about Black Sea Jewish slave trade, rather than the original, uh, the biggest one, the one that pertains solely to Ukrainian land, where there was no Arabs, there were no Turks. There was no Tatars throughout Ukraine that would have ability to trade with the, um, with the Ukrainian women, mothers and daughters. But Pollocks were, and Jews, in fact, were. You're gonna you're gonna read about all kinds of uh, ancient this and ancient that, but these are the subjects that were extremely extremely sensitive to Mr. Knesset. Knesset did not fucking like that. Uh, Arab, Turkish, uh, uh. and so for the fuck of it, it was more convenient for the state of the Israel to talk about. Uh, Crimean slave trade than uh, 
the slave trade I was talking about to you earlier that involved uh, Khmelnytsky. And I was told, if you will be, if you will see yourself in a Khmelnytsky, and then you're going to be schizophrenic like he was. And the way they demonstrate Khmelnytsky really is, uh, you know, you know, not the psychiatry would be any better than a slave trade. Actually, psychiatry is a, is a murder. This is a systematic kill to rape somebody and reduce his lifespan through the psychiatric pills. You know. uh, not that this would be, this is basically a murder. So I don't know about the Pollocks. Why is it that Pollocks and Jews, especially Jews, love the psychiatry so much other than to murder people? Through assistance of the governments, on whom they impose pressure, so they do it for them, because it looks like indirectly. Now, this case is a really good case, because it's going to point out people, it's going to give people a lot of uh, political freedom, it's going to give people the ability to, uh, to point out that there are other governments behind also that are being, you know, as long as you're not going to be manipulated, it's going to have a ability, sound ability, sound judgment, to point out why, for what issues you see this happening, that's fine, yeah. You should blame, however, you know. Khmelnytsky told, listen, Khmelnytsky told, already this is fucked up, you know. Khmelnytsky told the people that Pauls had sold them as slaves into the hands of the accursed Jews. With this as their battle cry, Cossacks and the peasantry massacred numerous Jews. So it was Cossacks and the peasantry, wild people, basically. Wild, wild people, barbarians, basically. You know, <laughs> he told, he told, you know, the people, he told the people that Pollock sold them <laughs> as slaves in the hands of Jews. <laughs> and, uh, this was, this was a major, major, major massacre then afterwards and this is what they this is what they compared me with and this is what they told me if you will be talking even ukrainian government officials they told me you know, you have ukrainians that threatening me with this issue yeah they told me if you will you know if you will talk about this stuff then you will be just like a Khmelnytsky. you read this and so on we will label you as a schizophrenia yeah, yeah, yeah you know your case will never finish. Your case never over. <laughs> you know, actually, this shit is quite hilarious from my point of view. Going through all this, meeting Mr. Knesset all the time, meeting these people from Israel all the time, dealing with the police, giving all these death threats, death threatening night and day, uh, breaking into my room, going over my hard drive, deleting me the information from hard drive, stealing me the information from hard drive, making himself copies, uh, stealing the passwords, doing all kinds of crazy stuff with the idea to portray, to make me portray myself as paranoid. Man, this shit is quite hilarious. But if you uh, still have some kind of doubts about that Jew would go and do the stuff like this, then I suggest you, and I will post this also on the internet. Hope I will find those other videos as well. You just go over. Uh, I don't know if the Hamas is uh, uh, Knesset planned on with these abductions. Like I said, to many people that were involved in MK Ultra, even Israelis, I don't know if they're gonna succeed by portraying the whole thing uh, by basically with covering with their news about them being victims of abductions, hijackings. Uh, I don't know if they're gonna succeed, cover something. This is fucking bloody, man. This is barbaric.
Yeah. I don't know if they're gonna succeed with that kind of stuff. It's gonna be it's gonna be tough. You're gonna have to work really really hard to The only thing they would do is the videos would simply disappear from the internet. Anything, anything they have these people inside of the Israel, especially. And they have the people in the United States of America, they're obsessed watching my program. They're fucking obsessed with the psychiatry and watching my program. Jew, the Jew was number one, it's like, psychiatry is like, the thing. I mean, this is the fucking thing. So keep his... Even forget about the income, online income that he could make, but keep his views down as low as possible so we could get him through psychiatry using Slovenian police, Slovenian judiciary system, Slovenian tech. European Court for Human Rights and the Parliament in Brussels, where our masters are in charge. Yes, you have masters, you have a Deutsch and Dutch, and you have French, and you have British, and you have Scandinavian, you have all these masters from the past. You have them in charge in Strasbourg, and you have them in charge in Brussels, yes? We are thus Europa, no? And for America, we didn't have to worry about it. So where am I uh, going to be classified based on this American uh, Equal o Opportunity Commission uh, equal employment, <laughs> equal employment, yeah, employment opportunity commission video. Am I gonna fit in the category of the Nazis or am I gonna fit in the category of, uh, you know, when I say Nazis, you know, who was the one who financed Adolf Hitler? Who was the one who promoted Adolf Hitler? Who was the one who anticipated he's gonna gain, gain more from Adolf Hitler? Who was the major financier of the German neo-Nazi party before the Hitler started to, to exterminate Jews? Who was the one who supported it the most? You know, my theory, what I'm pointing out actually is fucking as clear as this movie that was already deleted from the internet with list of other videos that were deleted from the internet and somehow have found its way back. Here you're watching uh, a women being uh, cemented into bordels, uh, a Russian, Ukrainian woman, a lot of Ukrainian women, probably most of them are Ukrainian. And then you have also some uh, Belarusian and uh, Polish, Slavic woman, basically. <laughs> this is hilarious, man. This is in Tel Aviv. Dramatic. Mm, the thing is, what what I love the most is that they, the people, that they, the, the, the females that they use, that's the Israeli government, after they saved them, you know, after they saved them, after the Israeli police saved them, you know what they do with them? They fucking throw them out. They expel them out. That's all there is. There was no compensation for the from the Israeli state for the crimes against humanity committed. And you're talking about the women with a with a sexual transmitting diseases, including AIDS. You're talking about women that their lives were completely wasted on total destruction of their bodies, completely used out, worn out. Uh, and I'm not going to say mentally how abusive this stuff is. You're talking about the 30,000 women is what the Jugal reports. Yes, the Jugal reports 30,000. Yeah, so what the real number is, we're probably never going to find out really what the, f what the real number is. But that's a decent amount of, uh, you know, 30,000. You know, when I think about that Jew that you have seen earlier, where he suggested it was like, uh, what the fuck, like uh, 20... I don't know, slaves that the Jews uh, held in the United States of America? It's fucking bizarre, man. That's yeah, that sucks, man. So yeah, you can you can you can omit you can omit uh, the uh, 
transatlantic Jewish slave trade, but you will never omit the truth about the atrocities you Jews have committed against Ukrainian people, whom, by the way, you would not go even admit what is known as a Holodomor issue, as a form of the genocide that took place against them. Because, yeah, because of too many fucking issues, including your masters, including those Western masters you have in Germany, in Holland, and, you know, those that give you a nuclear submarines, toys, basically, deadly toys, like nuclear submarines, and they give you F-35s, fighter jets, so that you can, you can fight uh, the terrorist. It's called the terrorist. It's a terrorist. It's not a Semite. No, 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 no. Palestinian people, not a Semite. No, it's a terrorist. This is a fucking horror, isn't it? But the best videos, the best, you know, the best videos, they were, they were just simply, they, they, just, they were just simply taken off, you know, and, and you won't get to see. You won't get Welcome to see to them. Expedition. You can, you get to see this guy here, you know. Uh, what is he says in the end Bible, of the video? In this video, I traveled. Uh, in the end of the video, you know what he says? This was the earliest mention of the name Israel outside of the Bible. Uh huh. This is yet another example of the details in the Bible being verified through the details of an inscription dug up through archaeology. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and you'll want to watch this related video where I travel to Sudan to see another inscription that is the earliest mention of example of the details in the Bible being verified through the details of an inscription dug up through archaeology dug up if you enjoyed this video please give it a like just and you'll up. want to watch this related video and foremost what you want to do ladies and gentlemen you do want to vote for Donald Trump here today, I'm going to say the right wing is called the right wing movement. You know, who is the leader of the right wing movement? If you ask me, the right wing movement, uh, to which, by the way, they, they associate with the nationalism, because the nationalism is really universal thing. You have nationalists in India, in China, in Africa. You know, the countries, thanks God, people take pride in their folklore, in their language, in their customs and uh, their origins, I'm going to say. Yeah. Uh, it's actually making a Nazism like look universal thing. And that is just not the matter of facts, you know. Um, the number one leader in a neo-Nazi movement today, I'm not going to even call it a, a, a zeo-fascism anymore, a Jews. Israel is the number one colonial, the most colonial, the most neo-Nazi, the most fascist state. And it appears that it's got origins. This, 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 this colonial, super colonial, super fascist, hateful state has its origins already far back, which are completely indifferent from the origins of what we see is taking place today. And for what I suggested, for as long as it will be, it will be war. I am absolutely right about it. The right-wing movement, if you want to look for the right-wing movement, the so-called right-wing movement, you're going to find one more in Israel than you're going to find one, whatever pertains to the Israeli politic, then you're going to find one absolutely anywhere when it comes to American politics. The center of the right-wingers, of the... Uh, called conservatism that's basically israel is the name yeah so if you want you can subscribe and make sure you're going to vote for donald trump and then you're going to be blessed and your family is going to be blessed you're going to get blessings you're going to have flowers are going to be flying from the sky you're going to be blessed i would suggest chinese to pay special attention to the fucking archaeologists like this because they have also statues and uh, stuff like this, literally stuff like this, stones like this. What they do is they have them fucking travel, they bury them, and then they, by, by the coincidence, their archaeologists or people whom they hire from the area uh, to find the special sensation, uh, they found, uh, I don't know, uh, 
who uh, people of the white white people already in the in the South America in the Peru and they found them already in in China they found them fucking all over the place they they just they're just they continue to find the sensation this sensational discoveries basically what they call the white man was everywhere fucking everywhere uh you know i don't know it must have been a big misfortune something that happened to the white man so he had to go bow away from china and from south america uh, i have no idea what happened the white man was not capable seems like defend himself in peru and because the white man was there first basically and so on and so forth so you know if you want to learn about this fascinating culture about the israeli uh, about the jewish trade about the, the jewish culture i should say about american equal impor- employment opportunity uh, brokers of your misfortune um you have to look into the culture then you have to call it for what it is or you can continue to to circle in a circle and you're never going to find the reason for the wars the, the reason for your poverty the reason for why so many people is on streets and so on and poverty and so on and more wars are coming next and so on I don't know if I missed anything here. I will say thanks for watching this video. Um, I could show you basically how they deleted the stuff to me. I could do that, but um, that's really not going to do me any good. Oh. Um, you're, you're not going to, practically, you're not going to get any kind of, uh, uh, oh, there you go, it's like 2,000, you know, 2,000 women from Russia, you know, 2,000, they say it's 2,000, you know, every year, aha, uh-huh, okay, oh, all right, that's already more serious, every year, I still disagree, I think the numbers are much greater, I think there is much, much more to it, yeah, I think there's a lot of disgusting stuff that goes on, uh a lot of horrific stuff I, I will try to find these videos and i will try to post them down below somehow uh, who knows maybe i still have them on my hard drive after all um i will look on the hard drive also to find and see if i can help with that kind of issue so that you get the real picture about also in many ways about uh, the israeli war on terror basically you know, the hamas about uh, you know, 2023. Good luck with the transatlantic uh, slave trade, uh, unless you're gonna find some, uh, some, uh, you know, unless you're gonna find some, some, uh, someone that that. That actually pays attention to this stuff that that is investigate and is taking is making sure so that he would not be uh you know ongoingly basically deleted. you've heard the anti-semitic so you banks jews the- manipulate space lasers jews pull the strings and make world leaders yeah just dance you know. but have you heard that jews controlled the slave trade this libelous claim began circulating in 1991 when an extremist organization known as the nation of islam mm-hmm. the jews controlled the slave trade this libelous claim began circulating in 1991 when an extremist organization space laser. So I, I think I got an idea about how I will name this video. Yeah. I should maybe call it a Marjorie. Marjorie Taylor is Jewish space lasers. Yeah, because they presented her like in a kind of funny way, like that she is like with Donald Trump, but Donald Trump is definitely not uh, not pro Knesset. Uh, no, he would kind of exterminate the whole thing to the next level, but of course not. Donald Trump is like down to earth, and he is just uh, absolutely he's not a Zio fascist. No, no, absolutely not in any way. Absolutely not. So, 
you know, it, it's Gaza, ladies and gentlemen. No, I'm gonna use this here, so you're gonna see this. I'm gonna put like this about the, about the Jewish uh, space lasers. We're gonna do the, the, the Jewish space laser video. Yes, no, I'm gonna do this stuff here. Remove this one. I like that space laser video because it's kind of funny, you know, it's kind of, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but when you think about, when you think about when you use, when you plug your brain, you know, when you, uh, when you turn your button, uh, it says brain, then, uh, shit, it's not so funny anymore. You know, mama is kidnapped by Hamas, you know. And, you know, I think I'm going to put in the midst of this stuff because it's so beautiful. I'm going to put the sign from Equal Employment Opportunity Commission because you know, this, this is whom I want to dedicate, uh, you know, the video to. I'm going to put it like this. Yeah, I'm going to do it like this. Up like that. Yeah, and I think somewhere in the middle of it, in the midst of it, we're going to put EEOC. This is the one in the U.S., right, that creates, that, that charters your your uh, your lives in, in America. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to do this one here. I think I like this with the hammer like that. Oh, yeah, I like that. We're going to do it like this. I like this. I like this so so. It looks so cool. It's like really. You cannot but take that stuff seriously. I mean, you cannot take that. Like this, we're gonna do it like that. Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna do this stuff here. And uh, then I guess uh, I am just gonna find some something else, some way to to finish this off. This post, ladies and gentlemen, pertains to whew, this pertains to To the Kamala Harris and her husband, her hubby, uh, his relative that was that was involved in MK Ultra, and for whom I really, really want to thank for. I really want to thank you. I want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you a million times. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This is very, very good. I like it. I like this here. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to say thank you. Look. See it? We're gonna outline with this one here. No. I did not appreciate uh, Israelis telling me, Knesset, tell me how am I to see things and or what and so on. I don't like that. Anyone saying to me, what am I allowed to say? How am I allowed to see so that somebody else would obtain even assistance, military assistance uh, to defend itself from extermination and that maybe is also the reason that it's also a good proof that you know jews did not change anything over the course of years and the holocaust itself is the cause that not pertain to them in absolutely any way anymore jews for the first time they have their homeland and it's time for humanity to hold them accountable for the crimes against humanity. There's no such thing anymore, you know. There's a discrimination against me. Hello, 1-800-EEOC. Well, where are you, sir? 
Uh, oh, I'm in Turkey. Uh, oh, where are you, sir? Oh, I, I'm in Egypt. Uh, where are you, sir? I'm in Iran. Oh, uh, drink, drink. Where are you, sir? I'm in Germany. Drink. Where are you, sir? I'm in Poland. Ring, ring. Where are you from? Where are you, sir? In France. All right, we're gonna notify. We get to FBI. It's coming. We're gonna send you. We're gonna send an email. We got an email. We're gonna communicate. We're gonna do this. We got oh, we got a special messiah. He's coming to your country. He's got the FBI badge. He's gonna investigate. He's gonna, you know, he's gonna do this. He's gonna do that. We're gonna, we're gonna, uh, our State Department. We're gonna, are we gonna contact them? We're gonna contact their embassy. It's gonna, uh, it's called anti-Islamitism. You know, fuck this. You got your beautiful, beautiful homeland now. And it's time for you to finally start to behave just like all other nations around the world. Because for the Holocaust, you can fucking forget about it. Uh, I'm not going to lose the three quarters of humanity and allow you to use the Holocaust for the neo-Nazi, literally for the neo-Nazi colonialism agenda. You are fucking out of the Holocaust. Deal with it.